Today, I'm going to be talking about the hierarchy of a manufacturing plant, the who's who of the production world. I thought it'd be fun sometimes to not always do as technical of videos on my engineering channel. This video would really give people who aren't in manufacturing an insight into how the factory works. So of course, a quick warning. All plants differ in some ways, and many use different names to signify the exact same role. Just like the industry you're in if you're not in manufacturing, everything's a little different place to place. Of course, as well, there are always those who have more power than the position they're in, and then there are those who are really just figureheads. And middle management in one department may have the same power as the level above or below them in a different department. So just because you're middle management in one department doesn't mean you're as equal as the middle management in another. All right, so let's start with those on top. Senior management. They decide the general direction and initiatives of the company. They must be involved in many meetings and change plans from a quality perspective. If you've heard of ISO, AS, TS, those are all quality standards. And most of those standards specify any big changes have to have senior management involved. They have to be at the meetings and they have to be leading the direction. So some positions you have in senior management, you have the president, of course, you have the vice president, you have the quality manager, plant manager, sales director, head of accounting, HR director, head purchaser, head of engineering, and a maintenance director. Typically you'll have a facility maintenance director and a production maintenance director. Facility maintenance dealing with things like lights, tables, walls, and production maintenance dealing with the machines and equipment. Then you have those in the middle. They're typically still bosses, usually, unless you're at a really small facility. They're called middle management. They report to senior management. They're generally in charge of a few people to several dozen people, again, depending on the size of the company. They will help implement the large changes, just like senior management, but they are also involved with delegating the more technical tasks to those below them. And unlike a lot of senior managers, a lot of middle managers will have the skills to do the technical tasks themselves. They just focus more on delegating. Some examples of middle management would be assistant plant manager, quality document controller, lead quality engineer, production manager, sales manager, junior accountant, HR associate, associate purchaser, senior engineer, so a design engineer or mechanical as opposed to a lead quality engineer, and a maintenance associate. And again, if the company is large enough, a lot of these titles will be below middle management. My experience is with a smaller facility mostly. Then you have low level office positions. The last positions you'll find in an office generally. And it's kind of strange to call these low level because these are still really good paying jobs with good benefits generally that most people would be happy to have. These jobs are usually held by uh, those with a decent amount of experience or college degrees. They're typically entry level positions into an office environment. They're typically engaged in the more technical day to day tasks. Now on the floor itself, you'll have shift supervisors, team leaders, then moving into the offices typically, you have quality engineers. Quality auditors are usually out on the floor more often. Good ones are anyway. Back in the office, you'll have sales associates, associate engineers. Then you'll have just typical data entry jobs, whether it's for accounting, HR, any other department that needs them. A lot of times your data entry will be done by interns. Typically, these positions transition into middle management if you do good work after five or ten years. Finally, we have floor workers, backbone of the company. They can also be called operators, team members, technicians, a lot of different things. Generally, in manufacturing, they're paid better than most other fields. When you're comparing people who just have high school degrees or limited experience, it's a very good entry-level job for someone off the streets. In manufacturing, they're typically very physically demanding jobs. Uh, they're typically the dirtiest of all workers in a manufacturing plant, uh, other than maintenance. They can really only be promoted to team leader or supervisor at most companies. Um, you'll hear a lot of people lament that back in the good old days in America, you could become senior management after working on the floor. Uh, unfortunately, at a lot of companies now, those days are gone. But 
what you see at a lot of good companies is that if they see someone on the floor is doing a great job, they're working their way up through floor promotions, they'll offer them incentives to go back to school so that they can be promoted to more of an office job or a half office, half floor job. And I think that's a good direction to head in. So now I briefly want to talk about the eight main departments you'll see in a manufacturing facility, how they interact, and some stereotypes. And again, like I warned earlier, this is only a very brief overview, doesn't include a lot, and a lot of these stereotypes won't always be true where you work. Okay, so first, HR. HR, of course, hires people for all the departments. They coordinate external training if one of the departments wants to go outside and get some training. Stereotypically, people complain that they always force events on everyone, you know, employee gatherings, things like that. Uh, a lot of people complain to them and feel as though nothing ever gets resolved. Uh, Non-stereotypically, typically you'll see them involved with safety uh, at smaller plants if you don't have a dedicated safety team. All right, moving on to production. Production will get HR involved to fire operators. Usually production will give warnings, but to eventually fire bad operators, they have to get HR involved. Uh, they will take internal complaints to quality so that things get fixed. They'll report machine issues to maintenance. Uh, the joke is production never fast enough to meet demand. Quality, that's where I worked. We like to blame them for a lot of our issues. Uh, and they'll also go to purchasing if they need additional small items to complete their work. Quality deals with customer and supplier issues. Uh, quality stereotypically gives everyone else work to do, so people weren't always happy to see us walk in their way. Quality comically thinks every department is flawed just because we're always dealing with the issues all the time. Uh, quality will consult with every department to make documentation and fix customer issues of some sort. Quality jokingly wishes sales would stop getting new contracts until current issues are resolved. But of course, in business, you want to keep growing, so it's good to get new sales. Accounting gives budgets to everyone. It may be your purchasing department that tells you what your budget is, but that typically comes from accounting, the senior level of accounting. They will work with sales on determining pricing for things. They will work with quality on customer issue charges. Uh, so a lot of times, if you send a bad part and get a customer complaint, you get charged for that. Or you have to pay to get the actual bad part shipped back. So I remember a lot of times the plant I worked in, we'd have to go to accounting and discuss the charges. Engineering. When I say engineering, I'm talking about the engineers who design the products or the machines. Typically mechanical engineers. I'm not talking about the engineers you would meet in quality or production. So in engineering, not only do they design products and machines, but they will also work with sales to get technical details. They'll work with production for floor details and capacity information. So that's very important if you're designing a production machine or the part to be produced. They'll work with quality to create something called pokey yokes, which are mechanical devices that prevent a mistake from happening. And oftentimes they will field questions from maintenance. There's a note here though. Typically, maintenance will know the machines better than engineering because they work with them on a daily basis. So if maintenance is coming to engineering, they're pretty much hopeless at that point. Maintenance, that is. Maintenance feels hopeless if they're going to engineering for help on a machine. Then we have sales. Sales will work with purchasing to determine pricing, and they'll work with production to understand capabilities. You can't sell something if you don't know how much of it you can make, or even if you can make it. And you definitely shouldn't sell something if you don't know how to price it appropriately. You need to make a profit. You have maintenance. Of course, maintenance will fix broken machines. They'll maintain the facility. They'll notify production if they need to run things a bit differently. And that's pretty frequent. You know, if a machine can't go up to its full speed or its full strength, production needs to know so they can run it differently. They'll talk to purchasing about special equipment needs. If things break or if they need to update something and it's expensive, they got to talk to purchasing. And they will recommend changes to engineering for future builds. You know, if something breaks a lot for them, they'll say, hey, make it differently this way this time. It'll be easier for us, easier for everyone. Because in manufacturing, you really want to avoid downtime. And anytime maintenance is involved, there's downtime. Last, I want to talk about purchasing. Purchasing handles everyone's purchases, of course. 
above a certain limit. Now, at a lot of facilities, there'll be something in place where you can go to your own department head and say, hey, I need to buy something up to $2,000 or $5,000, and you're good to go. Or maybe even you yourself can spend a couple hundred, and no one even cares. You know, you might have credit at a local store, and you just sign someone's name, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned a lot about the hierarchy and the interactions at manufacturing facilities. You probably will have noticed a lot of things are similar at your place, regardless of industry. So subscribe if you're interested. Thank you.